In this video, I will show you the following fact. This is a common exercise in physics. And the question is, use conservation of energy to show the speed of a bob as it passes through a low point in a pendulum. Okay, so first we begin by drawing a careful and well marked up sketch to be sure we know what is occurring here. We have a pendulum that looks like this, and this is the bob. Okay, so this is, let's say, the ceiling or something that the pendulum is suspended from, and then this is the bob. Okay, what we do is we displace the pendulum, say, to the left, as follows. So we are not changing the length of the string, we are just changing the angle. Okay, so let me measure this to be sure. I get the right value here. So that is a roughly two and a half inches. Okay, so I would draw another two and a half inches from, let's say, this point here. Okay. So we have displaced the pendulum. Here's our bob. Okay. And we will also take this as our reference level here. Okay, so this is the basic setup. This is the original setup. Then we displace the pendulum, and we displace it an angle theta relative to this. Okay, so this is our angle theta. So step one, step two. And now we will use the principle of conservation of energy. And that states that <clears throat> whatever the potential energy that is lost from here, as it swings back through the low point, becomes the kinetic energy of the object. Okay, so loss of potential energy equals gain of kinetic energy. So initial situation, displaced by an angle theta, release, and then whatever potential energy is stored in the system now becomes the kinetic energy of the bob as it swings through the low point over here after it's been released. Okay, so let's set up the mathematics here. We have the following. MGH equals one-half MV squared. Notice that the M's cancel. And all that remains is GH equals one half V squared. Now the question is, what is the height of the object? So here we have to use a bit of trig to find the height of the object. We make a triangle as I am doing here. And now we can observe the following. If the length of the string is L, then this is also L. And then by basic trig, what you can say is that the height of the object, okay, which is this quantity here that I've just marked, that is equal to L, which is this, minus L cosine theta, which is from here to here. So that is your L times the cosine of the angle. And the difference between these two is this little thing here. So I'm going to take this over and magnify it. Okay. So I've made it larger for the sake of improved visibility. This little piece is L, which is the whole string minus L cosine theta, which is that portion. And that is how far we are above ground level here. So H can be replaced with L minus L cosine theta, and this equals to 1 half V squared. Now that we have made the replacement, the next step is to Multiply both sides by 2 over 1, so as to remove the 1 half. 
or just two if you like, it doesn't matter. So it looks like this. Clear away the twos. So what we have is now switch the V and the other business onto the right side. So you have V squared equals 2G. And notice that in this expression, L is common to the two terms, which means we can factor it. So it turns into 2 times G times L, and then 1 minus cosine theta. And now we take square roots. There we are. So what remains is the following. V equals the square root of 2GL, 1 minus cosine theta, like this. And what this tells us is that the speed of the bob at the bottom of the swing is given by this expression. So it depends on the angle, it depends on the length of the string, because those are present in the expression. And of course it depends on G, but for Earth, we take G to be 9.81 meters per second squared. Of course, if you perform this experiment on the moon, you would have a different G on the moon. It's about a sixth of what it is on Earth. So that would also play a role in the velocity of the bob at the bottom of the swing. Okay? So one more time, this is L, the original string. We are using the principle of conservation of energy, so loss of potential equals gain of kinetic. You displace your L up this way, which means now you have a little height above the ground level. <clears throat> that height above ground is given by the original length of string minus L cosine theta, so that is this. And this isolates the little distance above ground, and I've here took it and I magnified it so it would be easier to mark up and easier to read. Now you, <clears throat> now you write an equation that says potential equals uh, kinetic. Cancel the m's. So in other words, it doesn't matter whether the mass is a kilogram or 50 kilograms because the m cancels away. Then we replace h with L minus L cosine theta. Then we multiply both sides by 2 or 2 over 1 if you like. Then we take square roots and this is the final expression for the velocity of the bob as it passes through the equilibrium after displacement. So what we might want to do now is say draw a third picture in the sequence but this one has motion to it so to speak because what we are imagining now is the bob is actually moving in this direction and the velocity of this of the bob and this is like the ground here and the velocity of the bob at this instant is given by this expression here there you go so thank you for watching